Hi everyone, it's Mr. Wasserman, and today we are going to be looking at mixed number subtraction. We are in our home links, uh, unit 5, lesson 8. And uh, when it comes to fractions, uh, I oftentimes use the analogy of money. Uh, in no other place are you going to see the use of uh, mixed numbers more than when you deal with dollars and cents. Now probably uh, coming in a close second is when we are cooking or baking or doing anything with food because we use a lot of measurement in food. So if you take a look at this first problem here, it says solve the number stories, use a different strategy for each one. The chocolate chip cake recipe calls for three and a third cups of milk. We only have one and two thirds cups at home. How much more milk do we need? Okay. So this number story is uh, requiring us to subtract some mixed numbers. Okay. But before we dive into that, let's uh, utilize our friend Ruckus to help us focus in on what we need to do. We're going to reread this problem, and as we do, we're going to underline the question, circle the important information, and come up with an action plan. Spoiler alert, we're going to be doing some subtracting. Okay? So let's reread that problem. The chocolate chip cake recipe calls for three and a third cups of milk. We only have one and two thirds cup at home. How much more milk do we need? Okay. So the first question is, what is my whole W H O L E? Or in other words, what's my unit? Okay. What am I counting when I'm subtracting? Okay. So we are counting cups of milk. Okay. So what is our number model? Well, we have three and a third cups, and we have one and two thirds cups. So my number model would look like this. Three and a third minus one and two thirds equals, and let's say M for milk. Again, the letter M is just a placeholder until we find our answer, okay? Now, I'm gonna give you an answer to this problem that is wrong. But on the surface, is it going to look right? Let's see if you can spot why it's wrong. Okay, so 3 and 1 thirds minus 2 and 1 thirds. Well, let's see here. Okay, uh, 3 minus 1 is 2. 1 minus 2 is 1. I know not to do anything with those uh, denominators because they're the same. So 2 and a third, right? No, that's incorrect. Okay, now, can you spot why? Well, maybe not clearly because I wrote my number sentence side to side, horizontally. What I should have done is written it vertically or up and down because when I write this problem up and down, 3 and 1 third minus 1 and 2 thirds, something becomes apparent to me, okay? What I see is that this bottom number here in the fractions place value, two-thirds is bigger than my top number, one-thirds. I have to regroup, okay? So what do I have to do? Well, I need to take a whole number and break it down into some more thirds, okay? So before I can subtract my fractions, I got to do something with my whole numbers. So here we go. I'm going to take three and make it into two, okay? And then my uh, loose whole one I have to break up into thirds okay and of course one whole is equal to three thirds right so if I add my one whole to my one third I'm actually adding three thirds to my one third and three plus one equals four thirds okay so my new problem, which is getting very messy, let me rewrite that, okay? Looks like this. It is now 2 and 4 thirds minus 1 and 2 thirds. You typically don't have a mixed number with an improper fraction paired with it. But as I regrouped, that's what I have now, okay? So now I can subtract, okay? So... Four, mi four thirds minus two thirds, or four minus two, is going to give me an answer of two. 
to what? Two thirds. And then two minus one is one. Okay? So my answer is the same as the second number I subtracted, one and two thirds. And it's one and two thirds cups of milk. Now I can prove that to be true by taking these two numbers and adding them back together, right? So one and two thirds plus one and two thirds. Add them together, okay? I'll even add a visual component to it, okay? So let's imagine those cups, right? So I have two full cups of milk, right? One here and one here because that represents the ones. There and there. Then I have my fractional parts. I have two-thirds a cup here and two-thirds a cup here, which gives me a total of four-thirds. So if I were to add those together, right, I'm going to take my cups, okay, two-thirds plus two-thirds is going to give me a total of four-thirds. So here's my cup, one, two, three, I'm going to fill it up. And then I've got a third left over that does not fit in my cup. Now, impossibly, my cup of milk is just levitating above the cup itself. That doesn't work. So what needs to happen is that this thir uh, three thirds of a cup needs to go into the whole number column here. So this now becomes another one cup, and then this becomes a third of a cup that gets put into its own container, right? So here's my other cup. So I've now transferred the milk into a cup without spilling it on my kitchen counter, okay? So this is my one-third right here. So that's how I can add one and two-thirds plus one and two-thirds. That gives me four-thirds, which gets transformed into one and one-third, and then one plus one is two, two cups right here added to my one cup, that's two plus one is three, then my third of a cup right here gives me my original amount, which was three and a third cups, okay? A little confusing at first, I'm sure, but... We're all using the same principles that we would use for multi-digit subtraction. We just have to pay attention to the place values. We have to remember to regroup. And uh, we just have to take one step at a time. You can do this. Okay. Lastly, I'd like to uh, review some multiplication with you. Okay. As we uh, pivot back to unit four, some large digit multiplication. I want to tackle number 10 with you. 5,715 times 6. Okay, let's do that partial product style, shall we? I'm going to rewrite my problem. 5,715 times 6. And then I'm going to break that number down into its place values. So 5,715 looks like this, 5,710 and 5. And I'm going to multiply each of those by the 6. That's the factor that they all have in common. So 5 times 6 is 30. So 5 times 6, or I'm sorry, 5 with 3 zeros times 6 is going to give me 30 with 3 zeros, or 30,000. 7 times 6 is 42. So I'm going to get 42 with two extra zeros, 4,200. 10 times 6 is 60. And 5 times 6 is 30. Okay. I'm going to add all those partial products together. 
and that's going to give me my grand total, 34,290. Okay? Do you have questions? If you do, you need to talk to your math teacher. If you are working from home and you're watching this video because your math teacher uh, decided to include it in their Canvas page or post it on their website or showed it to you in class and they were not teaching it to you live and you're at home stuck and even though this was a great uh, explanation, you're, you still have questions, you need to reach out to your math teacher. Send them a, a message in their Canvas inbox or email them or have your parents shoot them an email or pick up the phone and call. There are lots of ways that you can reach out to your math teacher if you are a virtual student. If you're watching this as part of a homework assignment and you're just sitting at home, bring those questions to class the next day, okay? I'm sure there's a point in your math period where your teacher might say, does anybody have any questions about the homework? Well, there's your in, okay? Regardless of what situation you find yourself in, it is always a healthy thing to do to ask questions when you have them. There are no such thing as stupid questions, okay? Uh, I hope this was helpful, and uh, until we talk again, have a good day. Thanks.